Okay, so now now I'm recording, but yeah. So how are how are we doing on our homework last week? Uh, this is Tamika. Uh, so, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Um. So I checked on the domain that we talked about in our one to one, uh -huh. and it's still available. I'm just debating. Do I want to stick with that or do I want to just change my whole business name altogether? Mm -hmm. um, I have the business cards, but of course, we're still waiting for the mayor in that situation. So right. that's as far as I got. Okay. All right. Um, so w when you say it's still available, did uh, I was under the impression you actually bought a domain with GoDaddy. And had it had paid the whatever twelve bucks to reserve it. Have, have you not done that? So when I did it, it was through the radio station, and they paid for it. Okay. But I had someone look and see if it's still available, and it is. So I guess no one they haven't done anything to it, or I guess have the rights to it or anything. Okay. So if I wanted to use it, I still could. Okay. Well, and the good news is you could do it through one of those easier to use websites that you could manipulate yourself by just kind of following that plug and play template. Because if it's still available, that means they haven't paid for it, which means you could grab it for yourself. And quite honestly, okay. it's probably worth that because if, I mean, if they use, go, I'm not a big fan of, of GoDaddy, which is mm -hmm. how 90% of people buy domains. But the reason they do that is because it's very difficult and they end up with, you know, the, you end up with like a hundred dollar a month plan because of all the add-ons that you need to deal with their cumbersome system. So, ah, okay. um, so that's kind of good news um, in that when you do decide on a name, you can just do that with the website and then don't, or with one of those recommended websites that I, that I suggested because those mm -hmm. are infinitely easier to just plop down, you know, pick a template, plop down a website, slap up a picture of yourself and maybe edit a couple other pictures and you're good to go. And it's the reason I kind of set that up first is because we're building upon that this week. We're building upon mm -hmm. that when we do business cards, you know, everything kind of depends on that. Um, so uh, that's kind of good news in the fact that mm -hmm. you can just go grab that yourself when you decide on a web host. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else? Melissa or Lauren? Um, yeah, this is Melissa. I have not started with, um, I have not done any actual purchasing or anything, um, but I have started looking into different names and it is hard to find something um, unique. And I, so I'm of the uh, perfectionist type. So this mm -hmm. week's quote is really good for me. <laughs> To, um, to just try and jump in and go. Um, so yes, I have not actually done any purchasing or anything. I'm still searching for that domain. Okay. Okay. Well, and and that that's the big thing to keep in mind. And I've I've done this too. And when I like my very first business, I had two or three domains before I st stuck with the one I wanted. And the beauty is, if if you find something that's good enough that's great because you can get that off the ground. You can start testing it with customers, with see if they even care. Um, most of my customers, uh, when I started my real estate business, they didn't care what company I was with. They barely knew what website I was on. They just knew that I sent them emails with material that they wanted to read and they called me when they had questions. Um, so, uh, but it is you. It is kind of holding you back from all the other things. So I would right. say if if you've got if you if it's toss up between a couple, just pick one or buy them both. They're they're ten or twelve bucks. You can just have one on on hold. Um, we okay. may or may not get into testing strategies for that because that's kind of an advanced topic, and I don't want to overwhelm you. But I've done that too, where it's where if you're torn between two business names, heck, buy them both. Spend a hundred dollars on advertising, fifty dollars to one website, fifty dollars to the other, and you can tell with with a very very easy test. And and here's the other mistake: don't ask your friends ever. Don't ask family. Don't it, their well, opinions okay. don't matter because they are not. Well, even if they are potential clients of yours, they're biased. 
um, and their opinion doesn't matter. What matters is the general public out there who will look at an ad and see house organizer system by Melissa versus homeorg.org. I don't know. Um, but you just pick two different domains and the metrics will tell you which one is more popular. Um, that's how Tim Ferriss wrote his book, Four Hour Workweek. Um, so it's, yeah, don't kill yourself. And if you, if you are torn between two or three domains that all happen to be available, buy them all. They're 10 or 12 bucks a piece. And then you have them locked down. You can choose one and then it's very, very easy to change it down the road. And I, I don't think I've had a business yet that I haven't changed the name um, after I proved that it that I could make sales because it none of it matters if you don't make any sales um, and the domain name isn't what's going to kill the ability to get sales. Um, well, as long as you're halfway smart about domains you choose. <laughs> Um, right. Of course, don't don't use Melissa would be a terrible choice, and that's a guaranteed fail. But um, you get the idea. So yeah, um, I would say I, don't worry about it, but grab something so you can do those other things. The bit, not having business cards isn't the end of the world. But by next week, after we talk about the steps for this week, it is probably something you're going to want to have on hand because next week we're going to start actually promoting your business. We're still kind of uh, building the root structure um, for your business. And I used uh, just an image of bamboo because this is something that gets used in entrepreneurial books and motivational books and all of that. Um, the idea of bamboo is that it can take years you can plant a bamboo seed, you can plant a fern seed, you can plant them both side by side. By the end of summer, your firm, fern would be beautiful and full and rich, and you'd wonder if the bamboo seeds took. Uh, and that might even go into year two. But year three, you'll have a plant that's gonna grow as much as a foot a day with the bamboo, and the fern will just be the same old plant it was three years prior. So everything we're still doing, we're, we're kind of establishing, we're planting that seed last week. This week, we're still not doing anything to promote your business, but we are fertilizing, we're cultivating, we're watering, we're nurturing, and we're going to get you in a place where you'll have a business that will grow and flourish a lot easier versus doing things out of order um, the other way. So this is just a reminder, it's perfectly fine. But I will say that these all these all kind of compound on each other. So I would encourage you to just pick something um, mm -hmm. and get going so you can uh, just start off, you know, legitimately and have a good solid business name that you're not going to have to go and do this again um, down the road if you just kind of do it and have people write you checks personally and so on. Because people do judge. Um, mm -hmm. Friends aside who are going to do business with you anyway because they want to support you, people judge. They judge if you've got a Hotmail email address. They judge if um, you're you're having if you're taking checks and having them write, write, written out to you personally versus to a business. Um, and those are all things that are roadblocks that are in the way of you actually uh, closing business. Um, so that's kind of why those are all just those foundational things that are – pretty good. So top priority, those three things. Um, and I encourage you to folk get that out of the way this week. And then we can talk about um, stuff to do this week that will build upon that. So I realized okay. we can we can pick up where we left off. Obviously, if you haven't picked a domain, you probably haven't got a business name. You can't do, uh, you can't file with the, the Secretary of State and so on. So we'll just, we'll, we'll assume that you're gonna work on that. And then the next step is you've, you've paid your 50 bucks, you've got your established business name. Now you need to uh, get a federal tax ID. And the good news is that's free. Um, I can include a link to it, but honestly, just go to Google and, and say, how do I get a, uh, how to apply for an EIN? That stands for Employee Identification Number. 
And that's just how the government keeps track of the income for your business. And again, this is this is a big mistake people get into. They, they collect checks personally. A, they're personally liable for anything and everything they do, which is a big mistake in case mistakes happen. Um, and uh, B, you get into commingling issues, which is just never fun. Um, I will admit, I've done this myself uh, in past businesses, and it gets to be a mess when it comes to reporting taxes and all that stuff. You do this right from the get-go. You've got a beautiful, clean set of books. You've got your personal income. You've got your business income separate. Gets slapped up on a Schedule C on your tax returns. More on that later. And it's just a nice, clean, easy way to start out. Um, so you can just Google. You can save this this link. I'll, I'll send it in follow-up. Or just Google, how do I get an EIN with the IRS? Um, they walk you through it. I won't, I won't bore you anything other than that, but it's very, very simple. There are about four steps, but it, again, you do need an entity number, which comes from the Colorado Secretary of State. And, um, oops, I did just walk through it before we got on the call. And it's like five steps. It's a piece of cake. It costs nothing. As soon as you do that, you can take that official looking document from the IRS and walk into a bank and open an account. Um, so those two steps kind of wrap up everything with our first uh, with our first week, and you've got a ready to go business um, that's protecting protected from personal liability or pre protecting you from personal liability and so on. So the next thing that's going to happen after you buy that domain is almost the next day you. Um, if you don't pay the extra $10 a year for domain privacy, you'll start getting phone calls and people will be promising the world, oh, and we can get you number one for your top keywords and start getting you droves of business. And you can you can just ignore all of those calls. Um, free tra There is no such thing as free traffic. Um, organic search results that, that come up quote unquote for free with Google take a lot of work and you either have to do that work yourself or you have to hire someone. But 90% of the people that will solicit you don't know what they're doing. Um, and when I say that, they might even be good at getting you to number one for whatever the top keyword you think is. That doesn't mean that it's a good keyword. And it's, it's just this big shell game that a lot of SEO people get into. Um, so don't fall into that trap. Uh, the good news is there are other easier ways to do that. And if your business ever flourishes enough that you want to start looking into SEO, you will have the data you need because you learned how to buy the right traffic and uh, convert that. But again, that's a very advanced topic. For right now, d just don't fall for the trap of we'll get you number one for insert keyword here. Um, it doesn't work that simply. Um, and anyone who just says that should never be given money um, because they have no clue what keywords are going to convert into business and what keywords won't. So um, we don't have to worry about that. Just hang up on those cold callers. It's an overwhelming concept. There are all sorts of things involved and you just don't need to worry about that yet. And I would say the same about paid advertising. Um, I and it, which is ironic because I wrote Google AdWords for Dummies. I built my first two careers on paid advertising. Um, I'm building my my current fourth career on paid advertising, but I've I've been around the block a few times and I kind of know a bit more than what I'm doing, more about what I'm doing. But for now, you don't need it. There's plenty of business to be had just through plenty of other strategies that we're going to talk about. Um, the other thing is, I see this all the time, you guys probably do, do too, where you, you get friended from old high school friends or college friends or whatever, and um, or just various friends or relatives, and all you see are posts of their wraps and their how much weight they've lost or uh, just various things that, that are all promotions on how they can sell you whatever 
multi-level marketing product that it is that they're selling. I don't care what business you're in, 90% of the friends that are on your Facebook feed don't give a damn. Um, uh, we may have wonderful friends, but they don't need to be, they don't want to have their feed filled up with promotional stuff. Hopefully most of the friends we have want to keep in touch with you personally and they want to see how your kids are growing up and all that. And that's what Facebook is for. Um, and that's why we talked about creating a Facebook page last week. So um, we've all got personal Facebook pages and that's for pictures of your kids, pictures of your vacations, whatever. Um, creating a, a Facebook page is so so easy and the beauty of doing that is that you you can then promote the hell out of that page and the people who do care about what it is that you have to offer whether it's tips about how to do something that has to do with your business uh, or outright pitches for your business or out, you know if you have a sale or if you have a promotion or whatever you can do that all you want on a Facebook page um, it's kind of a no-no on Facebook itself. And the same goes for Instagram. If you're gonna, if you've got a personal Instagram page, leave that as your personal site. Set up a second business account that you can advertise, that you can drive traffic to, that you can promote stuff, and the people that are interested will go there. You don't have to force it on anyone. The people who care will go. The people who don't won't. Um, and you can separate business from personal, um, and keep it that way, and not. Not to uh, have friends that used to love seeing your stuff unfollow or unfriend you because they're tired of seeing the wraps that you can sell to them that will help them lose 40 pounds and look better and so on. Um, so with that said, there are some really, really cool things that you can do once you create that Facebook page. So you create a page. I won't walk you through it. It's really straightforward. Are you Are you building a business? Um, or are you a famous person? Um, so most of us are just building a business. And then you've got entirely separate pages. And I can't stress this enough. Uh, once you've got your domain established, that's great. You can throw your domain name up on your page and you don't need to pay money to an advertiser or to a designer. Don't make a big deal out of this. This is all, obviously it's a picture of me. It's a picture that I grabbed off of a free picture site that I showed you last week, and another picture of me and my family. Um, you might choose different pictures, but don't don't pay for banner ads. Don't do anything. It does not take a lot. This is my Denver page, um, and I've got 14,000 people that like it. And it's I mean it looks a little prettier than it did when I first started. Probably my first 10,000 likes. It was uglier than this. Um, people don't care. What, they want to know about you. They want to see reviews, which is why we also want to have this in place right away. I don't care if you're helping friends out for free. Those are potential testimonials. Um, and you need to have this in place so that when you do help them and they say, thanks so much, you did an awesome job. Oh, you're very welcome. Would you mind going to this link and leaving me a review? It's as simple as that. But if you don't have a page ready to go, you won't have the opportunity to ask for that testimonial at the very right moment when someone thanked you for the job that you did. Um, so again, that's why we're talking about this early in the process. Um, and I, I hope I can't, I hope that I'm able to relay how unimportant cosmetics is. Don't beat yourself up over this. Uh, just get a page together that is dedicated to your business, and that's all you need to do. Um, just as another example, I don't commingle my businesses. So I have a Denver page. I have an Indianapolis page. Um, it's got – it's just as ugly as the other one. has entirely different content um, because I want these people to only care about trips out of Indianapolis. Uh, and we've got, it's a newer territory and I've got 4,700 people who like the page just fine. And that's all I need. So the other reason that you, um, that you want to have a page together is Facebook has all sorts 
of pro promotional magic that they can just do for you. Um, but they can't do it for you until you get that page together, until you have that domain together. And the good thing is, I'm gonna, you're not going to have to worry about how to do this stuff. You just need to set the stuff up and then hire someone to do the, the, the behind the scenes stuff. But um, for example, go back to my Denver page. Um, so you've got your personal page and that looks one way. Um, and then when you go to a business page, it has all of these different things. These are all different tools that you can use for your business. One of the best ones are your publishing tools. Um, and again, I'm not going to get, get down into the weeds on this, but, uh, let's, oh shoot. It's actually not publishing tools. It's create or manage ads. So we're not going to have you creating any ads quite yet. But there's something that's very, very important that you need to have a website in place for. And you need to have a Facebook page in place. You can't do this, but it, I'll, I'll tell you about how cool it is. Um, so there are all sorts of different things. You can get brand awareness out there. You can get generate traffic. You can generate likes for your page. Um, you can generate conversions. Um, something else you can do is go to the, you click on this ads manager tab, you go right down here, it's this hidden set of amazing tools. You can create audiences. And what you want to do is just tell Google, start collecting data on people who visit my website. So all you have to do and you don't have to do this. I'm just kind of showing for demonstration's sake. I'll then, I'll then show you how you can hire someone to just set this up for you. So I've created all sorts of audiences. I have audiences that say, go find me more people like my paying subscribers. And all, I don't even know who those people are, but Facebook does. So they cross analyze all of my paying subscribers and then they go out and find more people that have similar traits to those paying subscribers. Um, Another very, very cool thing is you can target people who spend the most time on your website. So if down the road you start writing a blog and you have various tips on organizing your house or cleaning up your credit or whatever, there's an infinite amount of content that you can create for your potential uh, customers to consume. And Facebook will keep track of who consumes the most of your stuff. And guess what? Whoever's on your blog reading all of your posts and watching your videos and spending all sorts of time on your website are your most likely candidates. And so you want to get that. It's called a it's called a tracking pixel. You want to get that in place on your website as soon as possible. Um, and all you have to do is just set up the audience. They'll give you a little script and you give that to um, to a programmer. Um, so as an example, let me make sure I'm not getting ahead of myself. Uh, so Facebook pages. Yeah. So again, we're not spending money yet. We're just setting up our foundation to do some really, really cool magic tricks that will drastically increase your odds of uh, A, getting new customers to work with you, and B, those, those customers that didn't, or those friends and family that are checking out your website, will start to see you in a whole new light uh, just because of these very simple, subtle magic tricks that you get to do on your website. And I say magic tricks um, because it is kind of kind of magic. Um, my brother is a prime example. He's been self-employed for 15, 18 years now. Um, he's always been a private tutor. Uh, he does private tutoring for helping people with math and sciences. He also helps people increase the, their SAT score. Um, and he has like a course that's a $1,500 course that guarantees that they'll increase their score by X amount of points. But the thing is, he's a one-man shop. He, much like me, works half of the time in his pajamas. And, um, and he's got a very, very basic website. And he also 
gets a lot of free traffic because he spent a lot of time. He created over 400 videos showing people how to solve various problems in SAT test prep books. And um, that's how he got all of his business. And I said, well, let's let's set up an AdWords account. Let's get a, a tracking pixel in place. And let's just let's make sure you convert more of those visitors. And he said, ah, I'm fine. I get I get thousands of visitors a month and free traffic and I don't need any of that. And I said, yeah, let's just throw it up there. And he was spending five to ten dollars a month on this ad campaign that we set up for him. And the funny thing is, what this does is Facebook will track this for you. Google AdWords will track this for you. And Google AdWords is um, how you buy traffic on Google. That's how you pay for advertising on Google. And you just get this simple little script that's free to install on your website. And then Facebook and Google will keep track of all your visitors. And when you decide that you want to do some marketing, it's the absolute best marketing that you can do. Because unlike me with the first time I was getting into marketing and I was like, oh, this is going to be great. And I'm going to, I'm going to spend a dollar per visitor and I'll get all sorts of visitors. And I put up an ad that I thought would do great. And I hit go. And we went out to dinner and a movie that night. And I spent... I started getting notices from my credit card company. You've been billed five hundred dollars. You've been billed five hundred dollars. And I, the only reason I didn't spend more than three thousand dollars while I was away at the movies was because uh, my credit card company shut Google off and they they stopped paying Google for the traffic that they were sending me. The beautiful thing about what I'm showing you is that 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 won't happen. Google or Facebook will only advertise to the people that you got to your website. So it's just friends and family. It's just the people that you handed your business card to. And then that's where the magic kicks in. So let's say you gave your business card to someone at a networking meeting. They go and they check out your website. Well, Google and Facebook starts following them and you can just pay for some advert, some banner ads that show up on Good House Cut Keeping's blog or Fortune Magazine's blog, or really, really uh, credible national websites that will allow Google or Facebook to put ads on their sites for them. And those ads can be paid for by you, but they only go to the people who visited your website. So that random person that you met at a networking and said, oh, that's cute, they've got a little business, let's see, let's see how they're doing with it. They go and they check it out, and then next thing they know, um, they see an ad for your company on Good Housekeeping. They see an ad for your company on Fortune Inc. Um, and your ad just starts showing up. And that plants a subconscious seed. And those would-be tire kickers become potential much more likely customers because they're like, oh, wow, if this person can advertise like this, they must be serious. And I, I tell the story of my brother because that's exactly what happened with him. Again, we're talking about a guy who's got a podunk little website that he threw together himself. And this is long before um, the resources that I give you that can that you could have a beautiful website in 10 minutes. Um, he, much like me, learned code and cumber cumbersomely put together an awkward looking sales page, much like what I showed you last week. But he had someone who was trying to get their kid into Ivy League schools, so a sophisticated buyer, who said, yeah, we, we uh, checked your site out and we're trying to get our daughter into a, an Ivy League school and we need to get her SAT scores up and we were gonna go with Sylvan Learning Center, but you guys are everywhere. And he just had a slam dunk $1,500 client plus $200 an hour um, tutoring slash consulting because of a $5 a month remarketing campaign. So much like I was stressing the importance of just picking a domain so you have something, it's so you have something to put your business cards on. It's also so you have something to let Google and Facebook do lots and lots of heavy lifting for you in terms of keeping track of every single visitor that's been to your website. Um, so that when you're ready to advertise and when you're ready to promote, uh, that's the easiest uh, thing that you can do. They say that it takes seven times as much effort to acquire a new customer as it does to keep an existing one. 
Well, the same holds true for website visitors. It, assuming you advertise smart, assuming you network with local businesses, assuming you're getting your business card out there, that's a lot of effort that you're getting for people to come to your website. And 90% of them aren't going to be in a buying place right then and there when they visit your website. They might just check your website out and go about their day and never think about it again. But if you're keeping track of who visited, or if you're asking Google and Facebook to keep track of who visited your website, um, it's a really, really powerful thing. There, there simply isn't a more effective form of advertising. Um, and I would say that you don't, you might not even need to go and do uh, advertising at the levels that I do for my companies or anything like that. Um, just remarketing to existing visitors can be extremely powerful. Any questions about that? No. Nope. So I I only have one more item for today, and that's uh, just about practicing that. So I I didn't I intentionally didn't show you the specifics of how to generate the script or how to go and create that that marketing pixel because it it's pretty simple to do. But I also wrote a wrote an entire book about it, and the best way I picked up clients was from people who read the book and still decided to hire me for consulting because they it was too much detail for them. And the beautiful thing about that is that that resource I told you about last week uh, called Upwork. Um, shoot, I had a a job posting created, but we'll just have to wing it. So this is, it's free to set up an account. So we're still, we're not talking about spending any money with any of this stuff yet that we've talked about today. And this is the best resource in the world. And it's, it's going to be very good practice for you to start practicing delegating things that you have no business doing. And when I say you have no business doing, you might be okay at it, but it's going to take you 10 or 20 hours to figure something out, and you could have pay, paid 10 or 20 bucks to someone in India who's who works for like three or four dollars an hour and is and can do this in 10 minutes. Um, so this is the most valuable resource that you can have. If you want to spruce up your website, there are designers on there. If you write some copy but it just doesn't have that punch it needs to have, you can hire copywriters. Um, I mean, it's just Limitless. I told you about my virtual assistant who helped me design uh, our wedding program uh, between when we went to bed and when we woke up. Um, so all you need to do is set up an account um, and then just go and post a job. And so create a new job post. They'll tell you what you need, and it's it's just like taking a classified ad out. So this could be as simple as uh, need help setting I won't bore you. I did pre-write it, um, and I can send it in the follow-up. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Ah, here it is. So I, I can send this in the follow-up, but this is as simple as it gets. Most of my job descriptions are very, very short. I try to be as succinct as possible. And then bids will just pile in. And, and you might say, I'm willing to spend 20 or $30. And if, if you don't get enough responses, okay, fine. You underbid it and delete the post and add it again for 50 bucks. But I guarantee you'll get plenty of people who will say, are you kidding? That's like three minutes of work. I'll do that for 20 bucks. Um, because they're programmers. They know what they're doing. So, and you can, you can have them set up the AdWords account. You should set up the Facebook page, but you can just give them admin access. And if you don't know how to do it, they'll tell you. Um, and I mean, most 
I would say 90% of the hires I've done did a great job for me right out of the gate. If they don't do a great job, you don't have to pay them. Or, well, if they, if they don't do the job to your specifications, uh, you don't pay them until they do that. And this, these, this is a very, very simple 10 to 20 minute project for a programmer. So you'd have plenty of people who would jump at the chance to help you. And, and more than, um, more than getting help with that job, it's just going to be a really good experience of practicing that delegating because it's going to be something that you're want, you're going to want to be good at versus spending dozens of hours on something, uh, when you could have been out there going to networking meetings and, and doing rainmaking business instead of perfecting the look and feel of your website. So with that said, it's a pretty, a pretty simple summary. Uh, it's a very simple homework. You, you should go ahead and just set up an AdWords account. Just go to google.adwords.com and hit sign up and set up an account. They don't require a credit card yet until you want to start advertising. You can create that pixel for free. Um, but you just want to have the, the AdWords account set up so that you can give them a, a temporary login and password. They'll do the, the programmer will do what they need. They'll generate the script. You give them a temporary login and password to your new domain that you created before this. Um, they'll put a script on there for both the Facebook and the AdWords pixel. And th this is, I think, a great homework assignment because it's, it's uh, just getting that practice in place of delegating this busy work to someone else who knows what they're doing. Um, and so I kind of anticipated that we'd probably not have completed our homework for last week. So I'm intentionally keeping this short because next week we're going to, we're going to build, build upon this stuff and it will start to get um, a little bit busier. We're actually going to start doing rainmaking activities, deciding if we want to put that ad out there um, and having all this in place will be really, really helpful uh, by the time we meet next week. So that's all I've got for this week. And just come back to the, the quote of the week of, I'm sure you're feeling overwhelmed. I'm sure you've got all sorts of other things that you want to do. And maybe we could take this time if you want to talk about, well, I was thinking about this or I was thinking about that. And I'd be glad to discuss on where that might fit in the timeline based on my experience. So. Any thoughts, any objections, any, any yeah, but statements that you're, that are going on in the back of your head, knowing that it's just the four of us and no one's judging for any questions that you have, no matter what. Um, I do have a question. So I have created a, uh, Facebook business page, but that's it. Mm -hmm. Like I just came up with the name and that's it. And I get notifications every day about, you know, you need to do this, you need to do that. But I'm like, it's so overwhelming. I don't know what I'm doing. So I might need like one-on-one -on -one, step by step what to do. And you know, I haven't even created like what I want my logo to look like or anything like that. Right. So my wheels are turning, but it just, it's just a Facebook page. <laughs> right. Well, and the good news is mine is just a Facebook page too. Uh, well, it started out that way. And the same thing, there, there are all sorts of things that you can do. Some of those tips coming from Facebook are great. Some of them you need to be wary of because it is a little bit of uh, the fox guarding the hen house. Um, mm -hmm. I, in my Google AdWords consulting days, I would have clients that say, oh, well, our Facebook rep or our, our AdWords rep said we should do this. And 95, not even nine out of 10, 95 times out of a hundred, I don't agree with the advice they're giving either because it's, it's the wrong strategy for the wrong client, or it's just plain not as effective as the stuff that I set up for them and so on. And that's another example of things that there are, there are expert experts out there on Upwork that would know, oh, well, yeah, you could do an ad, but a lead ad would be better. Um, and I mean, there are, there are a hundred different flavors of advertising you can do. And quite frankly, it's all 
way beyond what, uh, what you should be thinking about when getting your business off the ground. We're, we're, there are plenty of free or very cheap activities that you can do that will be far more effective than deciding how to advertise. And like I said, it, it, there is a lot that you can do and you can waste a lot of money fast um, by getting into that advertising stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen, I've seen accounts where they said, oh, well, yeah, we, we just turned on this source of traffic and it was, it was penny clicks. So how bad can it go? And, and same thing, they can spend thousands of dollars in a few hours from just the wrong checkbox with penny click traffic. Um, you know, I mean, they were getting hundreds of thousands of clicks per hour with penny traffic. And it's completely worthless traffic that did nothing but take their money and provide them with a bunch of crappy visitors that have no interest whatsoever in their product. So, I mean, I, we, we could, we could certainly look at the suggestions they're doing, but I think even the example I, sh I was showing, I've got mm -hmm. suggestions from Facebook and it's like, mm, yeah, no, thanks. That's, I know from personal experience that, uh, let me see. I know one of my other ones has a bunch of suggestions and I just click ignore. Um, most of this is a placeholder for reviews and testimonials from your subscribers. That's almost all I use Facebook for. I use this to just have a presence for people who, who are more comfortable on Facebook than visiting an outside website. There are some people that won't leave Facebook and they will only comment on Facebook posts. They won't add a comment to a blog. Um, and so that's, that's really all it's there for. I'm sure there are plenty, plenty of people who can do other stuff with it, but my personal experience, we're going to talk about things next week that you can do that have, that have nothing to do with any of this. Um, so okay. that's my two cents on that. Okay. Thanks. Sure thing. Um, Joel, I have a, a very basic question. I'm, Still in week one of the homework, um, mm -hmm. but as far as as far as choosing a name, is it is it more advantageous to do something kind of basic and straightforward that tells the client like, exactly what you're doing, like a Lauren organizes your home dot org or whatever, mm -hmm. or you know if you wanted to do so, like something more, I don't know, abstract or creative. Yeah. Would you, um, would you just say go, go if, straight forward so and know what you're about? You know, if you, if you can find one, the, the tough part about that is it can be tough. It's uh, a lot of the short domain names are taken and you'd be surprised. And you can go to any to either Wix or, um, or, or I actually, one thing I do use GoDaddy for, even though I've never given them a dime in business, is for their domain finder. It's just... It's an easy way to uh, look up a domain, uh -huh. because just because if you if you if you think of a name and then go type it on the web, just because it a website doesn't come up does not mean that that domain isn't taken. So it's usually a good idea to just go um, website builder online website templates hosting themes. Ah, I don't even know. Um, but almost all of these hosting sites, you can look up a domain and see if it's available. And if you can think of something short and sweet, short and cute, short and clever, great, grab it. Hurry up and grab it because there are people that are in the business of, of seeking those out and then selling them to you for a thousand times what you could have paid. Um, <laughs> I personally have never done that. They, they've mostly been descriptive and they've all been high volume, good, successful businesses. And every single one of my mine were boring, descriptive uh, websites. <laughs> they were clever enough, but I mean, automated home finder was a second iteration. It was something before that, that had to do with some sort of house finding service. Automated home finder was very clever because it was 1998. And that was a cool thing. It's not cool anymore. Every realtor can do that automatically now. But back then, 
having an automated system was cool. So that was about as clever as I got. But I mean, that's a long domain, kind of boring, um, and it worked great. I employed 70 agents because of that website. Um, I, Benchmark Realty was the real estate company I started. Great sounding name. People told me all the time, oh yeah, I think I've heard of you. They haven't. We were a tiny boutique company that uh, mm. 70 sounds like a lot, but that was spread all over Colorado. So all of our territories were pretty small. And on top of that, we didn't have, we had mostly represented buyers. So we didn't have tons of signs in yards. People didn't hear of us. They just thought they did. Um, and, but the domain itself wasn't, it was Benchmark Realty LLC, which is a royal pain in the ass to type out. But it worked. We, it, it gave us a good yeah. enough presence. The website looked okay. Um, never looked any better than okay. But people didn't care. We gave the service that they wanted, and that was fine. So I personally have always done descriptive websites. I mean, even, even my current one, Just Get Out of Town, come on, that is a long name to type out too. But it works. Um, you know, I've kind of cleverly created an acronym out of it, and I'm trying to make a verb out of Jagoot. Um, but, uh, that's about as clever as I've gotten with my domain. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And I, again, it's easy to switch. You can build out yeah. thousands of pages of content. Um, all of my, well, so just get out of town was Joel's cheap trips at first. In fact, I, it, I, there are still fingerprints of Joel's cheap trips on my various, on a few different parts of my website. But when I changed my mind, it was 50 bucks and an hour of work with a programmer. Um, and I, they migrated the whole thing over to just get out of town. So it's, I think it would be more effective to choose something that you're reasonably comfortable with and you can all, knowing that you can always change it in the future. Yeah, okay, great. Cool. Well, like I said, intentionally keeping it short and sweet because after this, we we probably are going to move forward and, and I'm just going to assume that you have things in, in place um, and we're going to start getting out there and networking and we're going to start doing things that will start making your phone ring. Um, so I think it's it's this is a good cutoff point so that you could focus on that stuff this week and hopefully have most of it in place by the time we talk next week. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Joel. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. You too. You too. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.